Ella Dixon gave a video deposition. Both the prosecution and defense questioned her. Santa wasn't the only one making deliveries today. Grace United Methodist Church delivered warm meals to people in Johnson County. We're having drinks out here. Cheers. Folks, mine is just water. Maybe not what they're <laughs> drinking, but I'm just having water. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Too bad I didn't bring my uh, bathing suit because these kids think it's hilarious when they're splashing me. Storm track eight meteorologist Brad Malsart. You know, I said I wasn't going to do it, <laughs> but I caved and turned the heat on. <laughs> While we dealt with storms here yesterday, parts of Tennessee dealt with multiple tornadoes. Your pipes froze. Uh, Unfortunately, they uh, did. You know, I got home from work yesterday. I'm hoping to take a shower, maybe wash the makeup off and put some sweatpants on. Not a faucet uh, in my house was working and you know I only have myself to blame. I sure look the part don't I Brooke? Uh, two things keeping me from actually flying this thing. The first thing being I have zero clue how to operate it and I want you to take a look inside. You can see why. Look at all of these controls, all these buttons. Pretty intense. And then the second thing and probably most importantly, I get motion sickness like nobody's business. You can see that traffic is green, which means a good thing, a little bit slow. Again, it's rush hour, tens of thousands of cars passing through, so that's to be expected. You, you know, want to have a white Christmas, absolutely. but if you can't have a white Christmas, the next best thing, I'm I thinking agree. sunshine in 50s. I would agree 100% with you there. One of the suspects, Brown, he died of an overdose before being charged. As for the other suspects, they face a slew of federal charges. Somebody is unfortunately Unfortunately, robbing me. I call 911 and my surveillance cameras are capturing it all happen. However, by the time police arrive, the suspect has fled the area. Nobody saw what he was driving. Well, you expect to see the typical things, you know, people selling tropical drinks when you come out here at the Speedway. But we were able to find some really interesting entrepreneurs. Check out these sunglasses, for example. So I know you're going to be jealous back at the station. $5. News 8 at 11 starts now. Now at 11, strong winds are moving in overnight. Some gusts may reach up to 50 miles per hour. Yikes. So let's check in with Storm Track 8 meteorologist Tara Hastings with the city's certified most accurate forecast. Tara, what do you have for us? All right, thanks for that, Tara. We'll be here to keep you updated all night, but you can take the forecast on the go with you with our Storm Track 8 weather app. You'll find current conditions, an hour by hour forecast, and live interactive radar. It's free for both iPhone and Android users. Just head over to your app store. It's been two months since a man was found dead behind a dumpster. Aaron Grice was shot and killed back in December. Police have yet to name a suspect. This afternoon, a grieving mother looking for answers talked to News 8's Richard Essex. Richard joins us now. And Richard, what did she have to say? Mm, tough circumstances for that family. Thank you for that, Richard. New tonight, officers are okay after their cars were hit during an investigation. This happened in Newcastle last night. Police tell us officers stopped someone for driving under the influence. That's when a truck hit one car, one police car that is, shoving it into the other one. The driver of the truck was cited. The driver suspected for DUI was arrested. Neither driver, however, was hurt. Developing tonight, we're learning more details about what happened to an Indiana State Trooper who was shot in his own home. It happened in Granger, that's in the northern part of the state. Investigators say the trooper's 11-year-old son shot him in the pelvis on Friday. The trooper went to the hospital and had surgery. He's in stable condition tonight. The boy is now facing a preliminary charge of attempted murder. He's being held at the Juvenile Justice Center in South Bend. Coming up, Indianapolis firefighters trying to keep you safe in case of a fire. What you need to know to be prepared. That's after the break. We'll get ready for some bumps in the night. The winds will start picking up early Sunday morning. Storm Track 8 meteorologist Tara Hastings joining us now. And I was out for my dinner break and I could already tell that the winds were starting to pick up a little bit. Yeah, and that's just the beginning because we're going to see wind gusts possibly up to about 50 miles per 50 hour. 50 miles per hour. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a to pull the hair back. Oh Yeah, it's going to be a bad <laughs> hair day tomorrow here, but we're on it, Tara, and ready for that wind. Charlie Cliff Clifford now here with sports. And Charlie, it's never too windy for sports. No, it is not, Elizabeth. Good day to sit. Done. That was wow. unbelievable. <laughs> Blown away. Can you imagine the strength of that kid? No, and I can imagine how many college coaches are calling him probably tonight and tomorrow morning. Can't even trying to get him to sign. Yeah, no kidding. I would Congrats. want him on my team too. I'm with you.
Another person we're blown away with, our very own Julian Grace, out doing some good tonight, a night of glamour. Investigators estimate damage at around $40,000, but if you take a look at the house, you'll see everything is just soot and ashes destroyed. It's hard to imagine that a family could actually survive this seriousness of a fire, but that's perhaps why the story is so remarkable. These gloves are so hard to... Move things in. Walking around in Kayla Gosen's house. That's all keepsake stuff out there, too. There should be sadness. I don't know if that can be cleaned off. Belongings reduced to soot and ashes. Memories melted. A home destroyed. It's crazy that we didn't inhale more. But what you can't see is the reason Kayla is grateful. Yeah, another, another 10, 20 minutes, and, you know, it had been a totally different story. Her next door neighbor and cousin, Joe Hines, woke up in the middle of the night. He thought he heard rain. It was actually debris from Kayla's burning home. So I got up and looked out the window and seen the fire in the back. It was already up, uh, up above the roof and smoking pretty good. Kayla, her husband, and their infant were sleeping as fire was taking over their home around them. I just jumped up and I didn't even put clothes on or anything and ran outside and, you know, came over here and just started yelling her name and beating on the door and... You know, knocking on the windows, trying to get them up. I don't know what we would have done if they weren't there. But waking the family up was just half of the battle. The fire was spreading quickly. They were trapped in their bedroom, unable to get out through the window. It's just filling up with smoke uh, even quicker, especially since the vents were just blowing it in at that point. And I mean, we're standing there with the newborn, like I'm panicking, trying to open this window. Like, why does this window not work? There really isn't time to think. Uh, we, we just grabbed, there was a brick laying there in front of the window and uh, we, we, we bust the window and got him out of there. Firefighters were on the scene within minutes, and the family is alive, thanks in part to Joe. They saved us, you know. They, they pretty much saved our lives. Things would have been so much different if you would have gone back to sleep. Yeah, they would have. It's not as dirty as the other things. So now you understand why, as Kayla walks through what remains of her home, there's no sadness. It's hard to be sad about the things, the material things that were lost when you're, uh, you know, we're all safe. Medics rushed that two-month-old to Riley Children's Hospital, but I'm told just as a precautionary measure, she's doing just fine tonight. The family also tells me that their dog was taken to the vet, but that dog also in good condition, so some good news there. Um, as far as what caused the fire, firefighters didn't say what caused it, but investigators do believe that it was accidental. Uh, the family did have working smoke detectors that were going off, must not have woke up to the sound of them, though. Um, they did not have renter's insurance, and that's that's why other family members have set up a GoFundMe page. We'll have that GoFundMe page and more information listed on our website, which is wishtv.com. Live on the city's southwest side, Elizabeth Choi, 24 Hour News 8. Conductors would likely be held responsible if their train delays motorists by 10 minutes or more. The average citation is going to cost around $200, starting at $160 and all the way up to $250. It's a plan that many people in the area are in support of. If you live anywhere south of downtown, chances are you've likely done business with Sports Plus in Greenwood. From Southport High School all the way down to Indian Creek, Sports Plus owner Scott Beasley customizes athletic wear, especially for local school districts. Basically the full gamut of sporting goods, plus we run uh, our own screen printing business in the back and we run our own embroidery machines. But there's a pressing issue that has nothing to do with T-shirts. Just feet away from the store is a railroad track that runs across busy Main Street. There's been days, um, maybe three or four days a month, uh, where there is a train that's just stopped on the railroad tracks. Beasley says he's had to wait sometimes up to 30 minutes for the train to finish passing. It's frustrating, and you see a lot of people, you know, turning around, pulling around. Right. More than 10 minutes, though. Greenwood can... Mayor Mark Myers yeah. has had enough. He's ready to start issuing fines, which would likely go to conductors. What's if my they... goal is to get their attention to make sure that the dispatcher, wherever he may be in Louisville or, or in Indianapolis, they understand don't block intersections. The fine isn't a new thing. In fact, according to Myers, it's state law. What is new? Enforcing it. We need to start enforcing that to let them know we're serious about this. I care about public safety and I care about the citizens. The only way to do that is to, 
to force the railroad to abide by the law. How's it going? Back at Sports Plus, Beasley is on board, but won't let it derail his work. Business as usual, it's, um, it's an annoyance for me. Greenwood isn't the only city that will be issuing fines. Munster is already doing that. Greenwood police will start right away. We did reach out to CSX, but have not heard back from them in time for our deadline. In Greenwood, Elizabeth Choi, 24-Hour News 8. Altogether, police are investigating five different burglaries, all happened in the same area of Sherman Drive and Hannah Avenue. In many of the cases, the suspect didn't get away with any material possessions, but did manage to steal the victim's sense of security. And today, they're working on getting that security back. No sooner did police leave the scene than home security crews arrived. Neighbors weren't going to let the sun set again before they had extra protection. Not only are we getting an alarm system, we're going to buy some cameras, purchase some cameras separately. We didn't have a security system before. We are having one installed today. She didn't hear when the suspect removed the screen from her window and opened it. The fright of waking up to an opened window with the blinds up and, um, you know, Having small children in the home is really disconcerting. For whatever reason, the suspect didn't go inside, it appears. But he or she did stay long enough to spray paint unknown pictures and objects along the back of her home. There were three victims altogether in Gale's subdivision, including Gale. Less than a mile away up the road, two more victims. When he walked in the door, the picture was crooked that was hanging right inside the door, which told him something was not right. The suspect managed to get inside Sarah Barham's home when she and her husband were at work. The thief ransacked her entire home, stealing family heirlooms, including an old gun, money, and several gift cards. Police were able to get fingerprints from some of the locations. No word yet if that has generated any leads. However, neighbors, you're asked to do your part. You're asked to review surveillance video if you have it. And if you notice anything suspicious happening in the Sherman Drive, Hannah Avenue area early yesterday morning, please contact Crime Stoppers. That number is area code 317-262-TIPS. From the city's south side, Elizabeth Choi, WISH TV, News 8. I'm here at Game Preserve on the city's south side where they have a variety of game options, including the local family's creation, which I would show you, but they're all sold out. It's not just a popular game, it's a game with a story behind it. Board games. It's something that's always been a part of Holly Hancock's life. Growing up, I remember every Sunday night um, getting around the dining room table and playing skipbo with my dad and grandma. She never imagined making a career of games, however. She married and after college taught second and fourth grade. Her husband, Travis, worked for an advertising agency. When he came to me and said, I have this idea for a board game um, and I kind of want to quit my job and work on it, I, <laughs> I was just, I was very skeptical. Yeah. But the Hancocks decided to roll the dice. Eric came up with the concept, and Holly came up with the design. Their first game is called Salem 1692. Its theme, the Salem Witch Trials. The characters in the game are actually people who are alive and active in the Salem Witch Trials. The Hancocks tested their game on friends and were encouraged. After tweaking it a number of times, they finally came up with a final product. The problem, they didn't have the money to mass produce it, so they used a crowdfunding website. We wanted to raise $6,000. That would give us the money to manufacture 1,000 copies of it. They raised $100,000. Eric quit his job in 2015. Holly quit hers last year. They've since released their second game, Tortuga, and also used crowdfunding to get that one started. It raised $400,000. And a third game, Deadwood, is now in the works, bringing in half a million dollars so far. They sold nearly 70,000 copies of their history-themed games. And their key to success, if you ask Holly, all goes back to her childhood. It's just fun and simple. Once they restock their shelves, you can pick up a copy of the Hancock family's games here at the Game Preserve on the city's south side, or head over to our website, wishtv.com, where we'll have a list of all other places you can pick it up. On the city's south side, Elizabeth Choi, 24-hour, News 8.